When you're working with survey data, there might come a time where you need to reverse code some of the responses to the items. Some survey items may carry with it a negative connotation, wherein in the same survey, there are items that carry a positive connotation. So in these instances, it's going to be important to reverse code the negative items. So that way the response anchors, whether it's acceptability, such as totally unacceptable to perfectly acceptable, or an agreeability anchor, such as strongly disagree to strongly agree, or an appropriateness anchor, such as absolutely inappropriate to absolutely appropriate, all stem from the same connotation of a positively phrased item. Now, years ago, the theory of questionnaire and survey design told us that we should intentionally phrase some items negatively and some positively, so that way we wouldn't have people that necessarily respond in all of the same fashion. However, the more recent research tells us that having negatively phrased items can sometimes carry an unintended bias with it. So based upon the research, best practice now tells us that when we design survey items, we should try and keep them all positively phrased. There are also two other considerations that I just briefly want to touch on. First is that you're going to come across Likert type survey items that have many response categories and some that have few response categories. What the most recent response category diagnostic research indicates is that we should shoot for four categories. The response category should be balanced, two positive, two negative. So I like to suggest that we always use a four response category structure. The last thing to consider is that sometimes you're going to come across having a neutral category in the middle of a four response category structure. So that'll turn it into a five response category structure. So you might see something like strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly agree. There is a lot of research that indicates that that is problematic because what we're trying to look for is a monotonic relationship between the categories. And when I say monotonic, I mean that each category has an increasing value. So strongly disagree would be one, disagree would be two, agree would be three, and strongly agree would be four, for example. When we have a neutral category in the middle, that ruins the monotonic relationship and that causes problems in the interpretation of the rating scale category structure. So people that use the neutral argue that there should be an option for people that don't have a particular feeling for the item that we're posing. In that case, what the best practice is, is to force them to respond some way. And we can use category diagnostics to indicate whether or not the responses of the people to that item fluctuate too much to make sense of it. So the idea is every item that you pose in a survey should be relevant. So in the instance that you come across a survey with a neutral in the middle, what I would suggest doing is taking all those responses, turning them into NAs, and then taking category four and category five and turning them into category three and category four. So briefly, I just wanted to mention that that's something if you take a measurement course or a measure construction course, we can talk more about how to handle some of those situations. But I just wanted to bring that up quickly. Let's talk about how we can do some recoding in R. So there are a few packages that we can use to recode vectors. I've personally found that the car package is the most user-friendly. So we need to install the package car. So we notice up here that I just used the install.packages function and inside I just typed in car. So I could just run this code and it's installed the package. So now the next thing we need to do is load the package. So using the function library, we can run that code and we'll load that package in. Okay, so just to clear a little workspace, I'm gonna delete this. So let's say we distribute a survey to undergraduate music students, and one of the items reads, do not like studying music history. We asked 10 students to respond to the survey. They each responded, one being strongly disagree, two being disagree, three being agree, four being strongly agree. So because this item has a negative connotation, do not like, we're going to have to recode the data so that way it reflects a positive connotation of the item. So in this case, we need the ones of strongly disagree to read strongly agree, we need the twos of disagree to read as agree. We need the three agree to read as disagree. And we need the four strongly disagree to read as strongly agree. So here I've taken the 10 responses, I've created an object called music history, and I've created a vector of the 10 responses. I'll run the code. Now we have the vector in our workspace. It's a numeric vector with 10 responses, either one, two, three, or four. Now in order to reverse the code, the first thing we always have to remember is that whatever we do, we have to create a new object to make the changes in. So in this particular case, let's call it music history, reverse coded, okay? And here we're going to use the car package. We're going to use the function from the car package recode. So you notice that when it pops up, and now that you understand the principle of installing packages, we notice here that in the brackets it says C-A-R. So any function that you type in, it'll always tell you where it's coming from. So we're gonna click on recode, and the first argument we need to pass is the original music history vector. So I'm gonna type in music history. Okay, I'm gonna separate it with a comma. And then in quotations, we're going to type in the recoding structure. 
So I want to say that number one needs to equal number four. I'll separate that with a semicolon. Two needs to be recoded as a three. I'll separate that with a semicolon. Three needs to be changed to a two. Separate it with a semicolon. And then four needs to equal one. Okay. I'm going to run this code. And then we notice up here that we have a new vector called music history reverse coded. It's a numeric vector. And then we notice here that the four is now turned into a one, two has turned into a three, and all of our numerical data has been reverse coded. So now maybe just to see it in the console, let's type in the original music history vector. Click run. We have the data stored in that vector. And then now we'll type in the new music history recoded vector. I'll run that. And now we have the new data and we notice once again that it's all reverse coded. So the reverse coding worked properly. Now at this point you can go on to create the ordered factor vectors that you need with the new reverse coded vectors. Okay, so let's pretend now that we receive some data and the data comes back as characters. We have the words typed in as strongly disagree, disagree, agree, and strongly agree. We can still use the same package. We can still use the same function in the package. We just need to be a little more detailed with our coding. Let's go back to the example from before where we provide the statement, I enjoy my musical experiences in school. But for the sake of this example, let's say that it read as a negative. I do not enjoy my musical experiences in school. So in this particular case, we need to recode all the strongly disagrees to strongly agree. We need to recode all of the disagrees to agree. We need to recode all of the agrees to disagree. And then we need to recode all of the strongly agrees to strongly disagree. So the first thing to do is read in this object into the workspace. So I'll run the code and now we have the enjoyment vector. It's a character vector with 10 elements. So the same thing we did in the previous video, we have to create an ordered factor vector that indicates specifically that the categories have an ordinal relationship. So I'm gonna use the same object name as we did before. And we're gonna use the same exact code that we did in the previous video. So we'll use the factor function. We first need to bring in the data that we're working on, so the enjoyment vector. We have to indicate that there is an ordering, so ordered equals true. And then we have to identify the specific levels. So levels equals, we'll concatenate, and then we'll type in the four category names. Okay, I'll run this code. Once again, we have the new vector. It's an ordered factor with four levels. Okay, so the next step here is where we need to reverse code the vector. So I'll type in a new vector name And once again, we're going to use the recode function from the car package. Okay, the first thing we need to do, as we always have been doing, is we need to bring in the data that we're working on. So I'll bring in the enjoyment factor ordered vector. And the same thing that we did before, we need to type in the recodes. So we'll start and end with the quotations. And then now what we need to do is we need to put each of the categories using a single apostrophe. So I'll type in strongly disagree. So this is category one now needs to equal, with a single apostrophe once again, strongly agree. I'll close with a single apostrophe, and I'll separate it with a semicolon. And we're gonna use the same structure for all of them. So all of the words end up in single apostrophes, and we'll use the same structure for all of these. So we'll go on with category two. Category three. And category four. Okay, I'll run this code. And now we have the new factor vector that's ordered and recoded. So the last thing that we can do now is come down here and just make sure that the reverse coding is correct. So the original coding was from the enjoyment vector. We'll type that in and I'll run that code. And then we'll type in the reverse coded vector. I'll run that. And we can see now how the responses are reverse coded. Strongly disagree to strongly agree, disagree to agree, disagree to agree. And so we're done with the reverse coding.